Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. Ninety-nine point nine K I S W, the Rock of Seattle. Let's play B Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. So everybody scream his name. B Mix, don't be a loser. B Mix, you're a loser. It is time to B Mix. It's time to turn. Four tacos. Yeah. Taco, 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 buddy. Yeah, nice. Oh yeah, buddy. Let's get to our contestant today. We got David in Lakewood to take on Steve. David, are you there, sir? Yes, sir. Right here. Excellent. All right, Steve, get out of here. For those playing at home, David will have sixty seconds to answer ten questions. David, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Yes. Who played the title character in the 1997 movie George of the Jungle? Oh, uh... George Clooney. No. No. (laughs) What year of the 2010s did Iron Man 3 come out? 2015. No. 2016. No. No. 17. No. What actor played Dr. Malcolm Crow in the 1999 movie The Sixth Sense? Uh. Oh. Oh. Pass. Who had the 80s hit song Time After Time? Pass. Oh. What is the capital of Maryland? Oh. oh. In what decade did Charles Ponzi use pyramid schemes to defraud people? Uh, No. Thirty. No. Uh, uh, No, Uh, David. um, uh, Don't call us. We'll call you. Um, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you, you got a goose egg. Nothing, yeah. David. You, you lose. Got, uh, nothing. You get nothing. Yeah. I'll Good day, you, uh, sir. I'm going to keep you on hold just in case, David, that Steve also gets nothing. There is no way. Yeah. I'm sorry, David. Uh, I love the right. fact that you called in. I'm going to hang up on you and he'll call you back. I love that? that you had a chance. All right. You fine. took that chance right, yeah, and you, right. wow, failed miserably. You didn't even, uh, do you want to put him on hold? No. 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 Okay. There's no... No. I mean, there is wow. a way. I've got his phone number. Yeah. There's a way. There and is if a it way. If it happens, I will call him. Crap. We'll hold a parade. How about you buy us breakfast? Um, okay. Steve. Wait, no. Yeah, Steve. He will buy no, us breakfast. No, because Steve will... Um, if I'm you very hungry. Really bad on this. I mean, really And I do bad. love a parade. You gotta do... Yeah. You gotta do the worst. But like, most importantly... Yeah. I love winning at Beat Mix. Yes! Oh, let's go. Ooh, all right. So you ready? Jesus. Thank God. Who played the title character in the 1997 movie George of the Jungle? I don't know. Uh, (laughs) George Clooney. No. How can you guess that? Wow. Terrible. Maybe they will. Maybe you George Plimpton. No. You might have to make that call, Rev. Boy George. No. What year of the 2010s did Iron Man 3 come out? Oh, that's 2017. No. 2015. No. 2016. No. no. What actor played Dr. Malcolm Crow in the 1990 movie 1999 movie The Sixth Sense? Oh, Bruce Willis. Yes. Who had the 80s hit song Time After Time? Oh, it's BJ's girl. Cindy Lauper. Yes. What is the capital of Maryland? Damatha. No. Nice. Cumberland. No. Uh, I'm trying to think of other places that my friends have lived. <laughs> uh, Washington City. No. Hey, In what decade did Charles Ponzi use pyramid schemes to defraud people? Ooh, I'm going 70s. No. 80s. No. 
60s. No. What male actor starred in the 2004 movie The Aviator? Uh, Harrison Ford. No. One, two, Steve, you dropped a deuce. Sorry, man. No, no, don't worry. David got zero. You win. <laughs> yeah, dude, you need to do really, yeah, really yeah. good. Like I said, yeah. please just get one. And yeah. thank God you knew at least one actor from The Sixth Sense. Are you really going to play a song for that ridiculous performance? Guess what, BJ? I'm the world's greatest. Yeah, dropping juices. No parades today. No breakfast. I'm sorry for that. But it isn't happening. Uh, yeah, somehow you guys managed to both guess George Clooney for George of the Jungle. Yeah. Which was not the case. Do they, look, do they look alike, him and... Uh, well, Danny will tell you. Yeah. Oh, Brendan Fraser. Yes, Brendan think, Fraser. Do we think oh they look alike? Gosh. Yeah. No, I just no. heard George, and I thought yeah. George Clooney. Uh, <laughs> I was just coming up with a stupid guess because I didn't know the answer. Well, that's exactly what the caller did to me. I didn't think, really think that boy George started in George of the Jungle. <laughs> that would have been... Or, or George Plimpton. Yeah. I don't even know who that is. Uh, isn't that oh, an George Plumpton's an old guy that you wouldn't know, Rev. <laughs> yeah, I have no yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah, he played hockey and wrote a book about it. Oh, okay. He played, played hockey th- once. Played football and also did yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Oh, it was like one of those guys who does something once and then writes a whole book about it. Pretty yeah. much. All right. All right. Cool. He's an expert. Uh, in the nowadays 20- it would be a reality show, but back then he wrote books about it. That, that's a good point. You're absolutely right. Thank you. What year of the 2010s did Iron Man 3 come out? It would be a guess, but I would say 11, 12, 13. 13, yeah, you're right right there. Uh, The capital of Maryland. Is it Bethesda? No. Oh, it's Bethesda. Yeah. I don't know what Bethesda is other than a video game company. I think it's in Maryland, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Chris cool. Ezra, it, it, well, I would, I, was, I would say Baltimore because I got nothing else. Uh, Annapolis. Ah, um, son of a damn it. And I always remember it after you say it because of the stupid commercial that had, I think, Charles Barkley in it. Oh, Annapolis. For ESPN. Uh, the decade that Charles Ponzi used the pyramid schemes to defraud people. It's a lot earlier than you were thinking there. Uh, yeah, it surely is. I guess mm-hmm. so. I, I, I would, well, you just gave me a clue. I wouldn't know. Let's just say it. Uh, 1920s. The 20s Ponzi yep. was doing his business? Yep, yeah. exactly. 20 wow. to 27. Wow. He went to jail in 1927, was deported from the country in 1930. Jeez, and then we had the Great Depression. Boy, mm-hmm. that, was, that was a bad time for people. Yeah, it's probably a little uh, coinciding there with that. Uh, and then finally, in The Aviator, who was the male star? I actually know this. Really? Yeah. Who is it? And he's a famous guy. Leo. Yes. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. I actually watched that movie. Oh, really? Yeah. That's the Howard Hughes one, right? Where yeah. he goes all crazy and is like wearing like uh, tissue boxes on his feet and has super long fingernails. Oh, and also is urinating and can, keeps his urine and just has it in his big room that he has, just lining the walls with bottles of urine. Huh. What movie are we talking about? That's the Aviator is about uh, Howard Hughes, the crazy guy who made like the Spruce Goose yeah. and did all the movies and stuff. Yeah, he was a little out there. Yeah. Sheesh. Like the only person I know that used to do that was my buddy who would, uh, you know, leave the, the jars because he didn't want to leave the room when he's playing video games. Yeah, he didn't quite have the success that Howard Hughes had. Your <laughs> yeah, body. no, not really. He just yeah. fill up those Mountain Dew bottles. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, Steve. You won with uh, two correct. I don't think that would be the bottle I'd want to fill up. Oh, because you're afraid of the color? Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mountain Dew is the wrong bottle to fill right. up. Well, right. I would go Coca-Cola, RC Cola. <laughs> Trouble is, Mountain Dew. Pepper. It's the gamer's uh, drink yeah. of choice. <laughs> That's he's right. Rev's right. You got to go. You got to do the do if you're going to play the game. And then when you got to do your own do, you're going to do it in the do. Why don't you do it old fashioned style and use Jolt Cola? Oh, Jolt. Do they still have Jolt? I don't know. They uh, should. Twice the caffeine. Whoa. They should. Damn. <laughs> well, All like right. I said, congratulations. Steve. Caller two. two. <laughs> caller two. Rev can't even get in the studio before caller two gets on here. Authorities say a Tesla sedan. And again, you know, <laughs> this is not good for Tesla and it's not good for self-driving vehicles. Uh, authorities say a Tesla sedan in autopilot mode has crashed into a park police cruiser in Southern California. Uh, on every level, not really good. Oh, that sucks. Again, there was a driver in this one, and they put it in autopilot mode. Do they not think maybe we should stop the thing? I don't understand how people... Yeah, I don't get it, because I'm banging on the brake going, there's, it's like cruise control. You can get out of cruise control pretty quickly when you realize, whoa! Right, what are you just watching going, I wonder when this is going to stop? I don't understand this. It's like, yeah, because when you're in cruise control and you're on the freeway and you notice, holy cow, I'm catching up to this car now. I, what do you do? You just hit the brake and you're out of cruise control. So why isn't it that easy for the, the auto drive mode or are people stupid? People uh, are stupid. Yes. Yeah, the, the, te- the Tesla driver suffered minor injuries. The officer was not in the police car when the accident happened. Uh, Tesla's semi-autonomous autopilot mode has come under some scrutiny following other recent crashes. The car maker says the function is not designed to avoid a collision and warns drivers not to rely on it entirely. So then what's it for? Is it basically like a cruise control then? Hmm. Uh, it seems like that. 
From what I've heard, I, I actually was in a Tesla this weekend. My friend oh, bought one. Fancy. It was so fancy space car but it was, um, from what I understand, it's like you put it on cruise control and it has like an auto detect thing, so that way if there's a car that stops in front of you or you start going in a different lane, it automatically just takes over. Okay. But I don't know if it actually like drives, I mean, and it, it'll re- regulate your speed, so that way you don't have to actually have your hand. Your foot on the wow battery. Maybe people are maybe people are just giving this thing too much like too much leeway. Yeah, and they don't realize. No, it doesn't. Do. You probably took a nap. Close your eyes and then oh oh I can't wait for that day. I know people love to drive. I can't wait for self driving cars. No, this isn't helping. I mean, yeah, I know it isn't. I don't know if you'll be alive by the time they get it all figured out. I don't even think I want to make it till past the weekend, to be honest. That's with what you. I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah. According to Tesla, uh, the autopilot, your Tesla will match speed to traffic conditions, keep within a lane, automatically change lanes without requiring driver input, transition from a freeway to another, exit the freeway when your destination is near, what? and self park. So then, what does it not do that led to this accident? I uh, guess city avoid dr- cars. City driving. <laughs> you notice it didn't say anything about driving in the city. So it's so it does all those things. But if it's but if it's going towards another big two thousand pound vehicle, it won't stop. I think that's well. Important. It also says every driver is responsible for remaining alert and active when using autopilot and must be prepared to take the action at any time. But I'm watching my shows. See, that's the problem. It was the other one where the the lady ran over the person crossing the street in the autopilot mode because they were looking at their text messages. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. not good. Like, you got to still be paying attention, you dum-dums. Well, people, I mean, you know, people aren't paying attention and they've got regular driving cars. I know. This is, this is, un- this is going to be a hell of a learning curve. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. This is tough, man, because we just, uh, we, you know, we have not had a lot of great experiences with Twin Peaks. We went to visit one in Minnesota one time, and it didn't have a good time. It's and now, one bad experience. Here's another one. Okay. <laughs> I mean, because I, I haven't really... Uh, like in Minnesota? The, where, where, where were we? Atlanta. Okay. Atlanta. Well, anyway. Atlanta, Minnesota. They both yeah. have with an A, right? They, they, they both have twins. <laughs> Well, there's a Twin Peaks in Oklahoma City, and a girl named Rachel did not do well to help me in my anecdotal experience because um, she was recently hired and recently fired uh, because, well, she had her first shift last Thursday, and on her first shift, just a few hours after she started, her manager caught her using a skimmer to steal customers' credit card information. First day, last day. God dang, man. I'm Uh, looking at her mugshot. She looks like an Oompa Loompa. Yeah. Because of how tan she is, or how... Fake tan she is. Wow. I, just looking at the mugshot, it just looks like she's going, oh my God, I didn't do it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Right? It does. But she got arrested on uh, one <laughs> felony count of unlawful use of a computer. Here's a cop talking about what happened. A manager, I guess, recognized that this person appeared that they were swiping the card through the machine and then also swiping the card maybe down in something else. And looked back at the footage and saw that in several instances, uh, the suspect in this case, who also just started that day, this was her first day there, uh, had been swiping customers' credit cards through the machine, through the computer, and then also seemed to be swiping it in some kind of credit card skimmer that she had yeah. on her person. We had a good experience in uh, Vegas at Twin Peaks. Or are you too drunk to remember? Oh, I, maybe I was. Remember that myself, was a, you and Chris, we hit up the bar to watch a football game. Oh, that we, was the Twin Peaks? Yeah, we were walking to some casino, oh. but we decided to stop to watch the yeah, football game. Good. And just posted up at the bar, and they were great. Yeah, they, so didn't, skim, they didn't skim our cards or anything. No. They were really nice. Yes, and they I, actually yeah. served us alcohol. Yeah, they did. That's probably why they were nice. Yeah. And I, clearly you should have been cut off because you don't remember this. I remember us being at a bar. Yes, they over served you. Yeah, they might have. Yeah, they gave me a drink. That over served me. That's so messed up to have like a little yeah. apparatus that you could skim cards with. Yeah, dude. And let me tell you something. This is why I love CPK because they let you pay through their app. App. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, which is, uh, and, and also with Apple Pay, we get, those things are now becoming more popular in my brain because then there's no card to give. Yep. There's nothing to be skimmed. Uh, you, you know, it's, it, it's, it's something that I think a lot of restaurants now have to do where you don't have to give your card to anybody to pay anymore. And I, I think that's a great idea. I'm looking at the news report where we heard, we got that audio of the, the police officer. And I, I got to say, I think I'd rather the police officer serve being a waitress at oh, Twin wow. Peaks than the actual. Damn. Yeah. Right. Man, if I'm Twin Peaks, I go, you know what? We have an opening, miss. Right. If you've ever done <laughs> fighting the 
bad guys. I bet you can get great. I mean, Twin Peaks, if you do a good job, you should get some good tips. Yes. You know, and I got to be thinking that all in all, it's got to be just as much as you can make as a cop, right? We still got to do a road trip to uh, to the South Center area, yeah. to Quilla. Yeah. Because there's a Twin Peaks there. I think we need to see if our local gals are stepping it up. Yeah, definitely. And not uh, taking money and uh, you know, skimming cards or anything. Danny also gave me the bad news that they closed the California Pizza Kitchen down in South Center. So now I might as well go to Twin Peaks. Yes. Might as well do that. So how about that? That Twin Peaks girl in Oklahoma City, Rachel, on her first day skimming people's credit card. <laughs> It's the lukewarm topic of the day. It was her first day, and it was her last day. So based on this, we want to know, when was your first day on the job your last day? When when, when did you basically, you were, you, you were not long for the place that you were working. 206-421-ROCK. You can also text us at 77999. Let's go to Joel and Lacey. Joel, you are on the rock. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning, Joel. What you got for us, buddy? Hey, so when I was a lot younger, I got a job at a wood paneling factory. Uh, driving a forklift and my boss shows me how to start this thing it runs with propane and you have to prime it to get it started well i apparently forgot to shut the primer off after i started it and i caught it on fire inside the building oh Oh. damn (laughs) yeah they pretty much fired me on the spot uh my boss comes up to me (laughs) he comes up to me and goes hey uh next time just let me start it and then i got called in the office like an hour later and they were like you gotta get out of here they're like there won't be a next time (laughs) yeah no you're done i want to know what you're doing now for a living joel because you know firefighter yeah because it really because you think in those days you go god i'm a loser i can't do anything right and whatever you what did you end up doing um, I'm a tree climber, actually. I, I'm an arborist. I work on trees. Geez, that worked out well for you. I know a lot of people love that job. How high do you get up on a tree? Oh, I mean, as tall as they are. You know, Washington, we can have 200 footers. Oh, yeah. Gosh, dude. no way. Yeah, man. <laughs> You know what, Joel? I had I had a tree I had a tree scammer come to my house and tell me I have two beautiful trees like on the uh, each side of my driveway, and one tree scammer scammer tried to tell me it was disease and I should cut it down because the neighbor wanted me to cut it down. So he mm. basically came over from the neighbor's yard to do his bidding, and I called the company that I normally do, and they go, "God dang, man! There was some unscrewed. They like that tree is beautiful. Don't cut that down." Uh, do you find that people there's unscrupulous people in your business? I, I, I and with the little valve tracks, the tree was fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, there's a lot, uh, and it's kind of embarrassing considering I consider myself a professional. Um, there's a lot of that going on where you'll get tried to sold, you know, fake work, stuff that does, isn't necessary, essentially. Yeah, um, man. So, yeah, well, always, always go with the uh, certified ISA arborist. There you go. I love that. Thank you, man. And that's why I brought it up because, man, you know, I, I mean, trees are awesome. Plus, they give us they give Thanks. us oxygen, Steve. A deep thoughts from BJ. Trees, trees are, are awesome. awesome. I like this text. Very simple. I took a job at the Lusty Lady. That didn't last a full hour. The creep level was too high. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought he meant he didn't last a full hour. Oh, no, I yeah, don't think that, that's what he was talking that, about. Yeah, that would I don't be, know if he was a janitor or yeah, what, but yeah. uh, for those that are new to this world of, of yeah. Seattle, yes. the Lusty Lady was like a peep show strip club, Yeah, and it was not, um, let's just say it wasn't necessarily the cleanest. No. Had no. the best billboards in downtown Seattle. They did. Clever, funny, but... I still wish I went there. I never went there. Went there once. Yeah. And I said, you know what? I'm not ever coming back Still, here. it would have been great to It's just awkward it's, sitting in a booth. Yeah, see, you know, for me, that's my life. And then the thing comes up, and there's a girl behind the glass, like, yeah. a, like a zoo. Ah, oh, the old days. And I'm realizing I'm in this booth, and I don't know how clean it is. Yeah. <laughs> so then I just kind of squatted over the chair. I'm like, I got to get out of here. That's why you got to wear a Heisenberg <laughs> suit when you go in there. Seriously, yeah. Seriously, you know, that's the best way to do or it. Or just change clothes once you get out of there and burn those clothes. Yeah. The vision in my brain of you just squatting over a chair in a peep show booth is something I don't you, think I ever need no, in my life. Don't need it. Well, yeah, because in the back of my head, I'm like, I don't want to sit on this chair. Oh, I get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to bring a lot of toilet paper like the girls do when they go to the restroom. Oh, good point. Yeah, that's all you got to do. Let's go to Chris and Auburn as we're asking, when, when was your first day on the job, your last day on the job? Chris, you are on the rock. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good. Thank you, buddy. So how about you? When was your first day, your last day working? All right, so we'll keep the airline's name out of it, but I think a lot of people will figure it out. Um, I got hired at SeaTac working for a major airline um, contract, and I was hired as a trainer slash accident investigator. So, oh, man, I'm moving up in the world. Well, when I found myself loading an airplane by myself, which usually takes five people to do, and the plane was two hours late getting out, I realized, what am I into? Oh, damn. Oh, yeah, I happened to look out across the ramp to see other airplanes out there. 
and these guys, it was the first day of the contract. They were trying to figure out how to uh, hook up the toilet hose to the back of the airplane. Oof. There was poop and pee everywhere. Oh, God. Oh. And I think the icing on the cake was when I got a call to go pick up a finger and take oh. the guy to the hospital. Yeah, he literally lost Yep, yep, yep. Oh, God. He literally lost his finger, so I had to pick up his finger with a glove and put it in a bag. I'm like, really? What am I doing to myself here? I, I mean, can't it, believe that the, the, the poo and pee didn't chase you away, but the finger had to make it your last day. I mean, that, I'm finger, done. That, he, when he gave me the finger, I was like, that's it. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> how about that? That's really getting the finger. Damn, dude. Wow, I didn't know the airline industry was so glamorous. Who knew? <laughs> Damn. Now I know why Russell Wilson wants to be the CFO of a particular airline. I don't That's know if right. that one, but hey, I didn't know how the F stands for finger. Damn, dude. Let's go to Eric in Seattle, 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Eric, you are on the rock. Hey, how's it going, guys? Not too bad, buddy. What you got for us? Uh, my first and last job one day. Uh, one time I got a job working at a restaurant, and I went out to celebrate that night. Partied a little too hard and didn't come in the next day, and I got canned. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, I don't, oh. I don't drink anymore. But yeah. please tell me you asked for a, a, a letter of reference or something after that. Oh man. Yeah, I, they definitely didn't give me a, a good recommendation after that. Yeah, that, you know, and I know how that boy. When you don't, when you do, you don't make it. You oversleep. That happened to me. I, I had a chance to be on a big time radio station in New York City, big time. And the first day, the guys didn't really, really like me. And I had a two day audition. They didn't like anybody. They were just unhappy that anybody was in there. And I was trying yep. to be as friendly as I could. And the next day, I overslept. So I tried to make it off like, oh, they were jerks to me. And I, but really, I just was like, I can't believe I overslept on a job interview for New York City. I suck so much. How can I blame it on somebody else? And I tried yeah. to. But they, they, the, the, the management was just like, yeah. My w- only experience where a job lasted one day was when I first moved out here. I was just trying to find a job anywhere, and I was one of those suckers that fell for the ads in the back of the stranger. I said, work in a fun rock and roll environment. I'm like, that's my kind of job. Yeah. So I think it was like Bellevue or somewhere. I'd go there, and, and the office was cool and hip. And then I turned to find out. He's like, okay, well, you're going to be selling art to people. I'm like, okay. I'm not really a salesperson, but okay. So I go in a car with a guy who's got a bunch of like these fake versions of like popular art like you know like a Van Gogh or a Picasso or something and it's just like you know matted and framed and he had like a whole stack of them in the back of his car and we would just go to different businesses even if it said no solicitation he would find ways to sneak in through the back door with one of the pieces of art and just go up to people at their cubicle and be like hey would you like to buy this art wow and I'm just like watching this guy and he had I mean he was great at it I mean he didn't sell any but he was great at just how he was selling it damn he had I mean balls of steel I couldn't even imagine doing this and after, by lunchtime he goes okay well blah 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 and I'm like can you just drop me off in my car this is not my thing <laughs> and I, I, didn't, I didn't even last the orientation I'm like this wow. is not my world man I'm yeah. not gonna just bust into people's workplaces and bug them to buy $25 pieces of art yeah that's a t- that, that takes a special type of person that ain't me either no that ain't me either Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How much does bankruptcy cost? Usually with my office, we we do a flat fee that includes all your court costs, filing fees, credit counseling, credit reports in one cost. In Chapter 13 cases, that usually starts at about $900 uh, with Chapter 7 cases. So total costs, including all your court costs, attorney fees, is usually about $1,500. We offer payment plans on Chapter 7, so you can start a file with my office for as little as $200. You can send your creditor calls to us. We'll take your creditor calls while you get gather up your information and, and pay, make payments on the rest of the fees. But Chapter 13 cases, uh, we can make payment arrangements in most cases as well and get your case filed even sooner in a Chapter 13 case because of the reorganization aspect to it. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening.